Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I will take these two sets of designs, one traditional art and one digital, and turn them both into sticker sheets. I'm going to be using Photoshop on my PC as well as my sticker cutting machine today, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Before we jump in, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I've worked with Skillshare several times before, and it's always nothing but a pleasure having the opportunity to explore some of their classes to share with you guys here. We'll talk more about them a bit later on in the video. For now, let's jump into our first set of designs. Our traditional art stickers are going to take a bit more prep work, so to get started, I'm going to scan my art in with my Epson V550 photo scanner. And once I have that file in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the levels and the color balance to get things as close to where I want them as possible. I may have to adjust them again after I've printed out my first set to kind of gauge how things look once they're on paper, because the colors can vary depending on the type of paper you're using and how your monitor's calibrated. So I'm going to get them as close as I can now, and if I have to adjust them later, that's okay. What you're seeing me do here is I am selecting each of the individual illustrations with the selection tool, cutting and pasting them so that they are on their own layer, and then using the magic wand to select the white area around the illustration and deleting that so that it has a transparent background. When you're using the magic wand tool, I usually set the tolerance up at the top to somewhere around 15 or 20. This allows it to select the white area while not selecting too much of my illustration because I don't really want to lose any of that information if I can help it. Once each illustration is on its own layer, I actually kind of did things a little bit backwards, then took the whole set of illustrations into Procreate so that I could make the white border around the outside, but I'll show you how I did that when we get to the other set of stickers. Once they all have their white borders, I'm just going to make multiples of some of the little teacups and kind of arrange them on the sheet the way I want them to be. You guys may have heard me talk about tea before. It's one of my greatest simple pleasures in life. There are so many different types of tea that I absolutely love. I don't even know if I could pick one as a favorite, and I thought it would be fun to make a tea-themed set. The teas I'm featuring on this sticker sheet from the top are Earl Grey in the top bag, and then a green tea that has toasted rice in it that kind of pops like popcorn that's really, really, really yummy, and chamomile at the bottom with a bunch of different colored teacups full of lovely tea. Now that I have everything organized the way I want it to be, I'm going to save this as a PNG with a transparent background, and I'm just gonna be using this blank canvas as a template that I have set to the size I want my sticker sheets to be. I'm planning to print out two sheets on each piece of sticker paper. Depending on how you're cutting what size sticker paper you're using, this may vary for you. Because I'm going to be using Cricut and using their design studio, I needed that to measure 6.75 inches by 9.25 inches, so that was the template I'm using. The machine that I'm going to be using today is the Cricut Explore Air 2. You can cut all kinds of different materials with this. I'm mostly going to be using it for paper because I want to make stickers. And you may have seen in the beginning that I had uploaded several different versions of this file because it's a lot of trial and error. I have to learn that some things work and some things don't work and you have to kind of just keep trying until you get the style and the balance that you want. The interface itself is pretty straightforward and you can do a lot of the editing that Photoshop allows from Cricut. So if you don't have Photoshop, you could technically select where you want the machine to cut and where the borders of your stickers will be from there. Cricut wants to have this black border around the outside for the actual cutting machine. And adjusting my canvas size in Photoshop was so important because having done that, it made it so much easier to take it into Cricut's design studio and have it be the right size right away with both sheets on the same piece of paper. I went ahead and saved this as a print and cut design, not just a cut design because we haven't printed yet. And I can print right from Cricut Design Studio to my Canon Pixma Pro 100. And that's going to print out my designs on sticker paper. This is a matte sticker paper, so it's just kind of has like a normal paper texture. We'll use glossy sticker paper for the next set. 
If you don't have a sticker cutting machine or you're just planning to cut your stickers by hand, which is what I had been doing up to this point, now is the point where you would just print out your designs and cut them out by hand. You don't have to worry about Cricut's Design Studio, you can just print directly from Photoshop or whatever editing software you're using. Once my designs were printed out, I got out the mat that comes with the Cricut cutter. It's actually sticky, it has an adhesive side on the front, so after peeling back that plastic protective layer, I can stick my page right on and that's going to keep my sticker paper in place when the machine is ready to cut. Depending on how ambitious your crafting is, you can get a more expensive version of a Cricut cutter called the Cricut Maker, but because I'm primarily going to be focusing on stickers and paper, I have the Cricut Explore Air 2, which can still cut several different types of materials other than paper, like vinyl and cardstock and all that sort of very interesting DIY crafty stuff, but for me, we're focusing on paper today. So I've got my mat loaded in here. That's what this first blinking button is about. Once the mat is mounted and loaded inside, the second blinking button will allow us to actually start cutting. Before the machine cuts, it will kind of scan the page to find the edges so that everything is lined up. And when it actually begins the cutting, it's going to be going according to the edges of your transparent PNG. So wherever those edges of your images are, that's where it's going to cut. And you can adjust that within Cricut software prior to printing if you'd like to. But I did all of that in Photoshop before I even got to the design studio and that just made the process a lot simpler. This was also the first time I had used this cutting machine. So this may look fascinating to you and trust me, it was just as fascinating to me to get to watch this thing cut. There is a dial on the Cricut machine where you can adjust the material of what it is that you're cutting. I had mine set between paper and vinyl. I know there are other adjustments you can make for like die cut stickers if you want to cut all the way through your paper. I didn't adjust anything other than that dial just a tiny bit and I got exactly what I wanted which were kiss cut stickers. The stickers are cut out but it doesn't go all the way through the paper. I know that I could have fine tuned that a little bit more, but I, to be honest, I forgot about it and it just happened to work out the first time I cut. One thing that did not work out the first time was that I was very impatient in removing the paper from the sticky mat and I should have just used that scraping tool that I was using all the way through and gone nice and slow, but I didn't. I rushed it and I pulled it up and I ended up kind of denting my paper a little bit and damaging it, but that's okay. This is the first page, it's a test sheet, and I know to be more careful in the future. After I had removed my sticker paper from the sheet and replaced that protective plastic piece back over the sticky sheet so that it wouldn't collect dust and lose its stickiness, I have my paper cutter that I use to prepare prints, and I use that to trim off the excess and the outside borders from the Cricut machine. I'd say that's the only thing that I'm not super fond of when it comes to using the cutting machine is that there's so much extra space around the outside of the paper that I can't really control because Cricut needs those borders to kind of scan and make sure that it's cutting in the right place. After I had cut these down to size, my sticker sheets were ready to go and they peeled up perfectly. I will of course leave links to all of the sticker paper and my machines and everything that I'm using down in the description if you want to check anything out. And this is what the finished sticker sheet looks like next to our original artwork. Now that we've got that done, let's move on to talking a little bit about our digital designs. As I said, I used this matte paper. It's actually Cricut's brand of printable vinyl. Not my favorite actually matte sticker papers. I think there are others that are better. I really like this Photo Paper Direct brand. They have a glossy sticker paper that I use all the time and they have a matte paper that they make as well. So I'm gonna be using the glossy one for this next set. It's easier for me to show you in my digital designs how I added the white background. What I did is I just have a hard round brush set to a relatively large size and I'm going to go around the outside of my designs. I did the exact same thing with my traditional pieces and I just made sure that that white layer was behind my illustration so that layer was underneath and I also turned the streamline setting in that brush all the way to max so the line would be as smooth as possible. With my digital art you can kind of adjust colors while you're creating so we can skip that entire color adjustment step in Photoshop because everything's good to go in Procreate. 
Here I was playing around with these different image types that Cricut offers and realized that I was going to stick with complex because I do have gradients in color and the machine would actually try to simplify my colors if I tried to go with any of the other settings. Same thing here, I adjusted my canvas size in Procreate so that I knew that this thicker sheet would be the right size. And I wanted to experiment with making a larger sheet this time. So I have one sheet on one page. And again, I printed directly from the Cricut Design Studio, saved it as a print then cut design, printed it out right from there. And past this point, our process is exactly the same. So we get to have the very satisfying experience of peeling off that plastic over our sticky mat again and aligning that as closely as we can in that top corner to get things nice and straight. I know in videos like this there's just so much information to try and cover at one time, so if I've missed anything please feel free to leave your comments down below and I will try to answer as many questions as I can. This machine is relatively new to me, and it's actually this collaboration with Skillshare that has enabled me to get this printing machine and be able to make this video for you guys. Skillshare has some really nice classes for creating your own merchandise, not just stickers, but other forms of printed illustration as well. And there are a couple classes that you can see here on the screen, and I'll leave links in them down in the description as well, that I would highly recommend checking out if you are looking to create your own merchandise or your own online shop. And these are resources that have been particularly helpful to me. So the first 500 people to sign up for Skillshare via the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership with access to all of their thousands and thousands of classes on everything from how to draw and use watercolors, which are the kind of classes I teach, to other things that I enjoy learning from, like how to make merchandise and how to make sketchbooks and how to do social media, all kinds of things. So if you're interested, please do check out the link below. You'd think that I would have learned from my past mistakes in removing the last piece of paper and taken my time, gone nice and slow and used that tool to peel it up all the way. You could also use like a credit card or something flat, but of course, no, I was impatient. Once again, pulled the sheet straight off and had a very similar shaped dent in my paper. Just like last time, I'm gonna get my cutter out, cut around the outside edges of the page and we're left with a sticker sheet. Now these stickers are thicker because I use a different type of paper that is thicker and they're glossy and they are much larger. I was actually thinking after I had cut this one out that these might actually make nice normal die cut stickers. So instead of them being on a sheet and sending out all of that extra paper, it might be nice to just cut these ones all the way through and have little stickers together in a little pouch. Because this first example was on a sheet, I wanted it to kind of have a name, like the sticker sheet to have a name. So I called it Handmade Stickers. Get it? Because they're hands. Anyway, I went ahead and wrote in the title myself just as an experiment to see. And as with the last one, the machine worked really, really well and cut through my paper. I did notice that it was a little bit harder for me to lift up the first sticker because the paper is a little bit thicker so I might have to turn that dial a little bit more towards vinyl so that the needle cuts a little bit deeper into the paper but ultimately I can see that the machine itself has a lot of versatility and I'm excited to try it out some more. If you're interested in these stickers, I'm planning to have them up on my shop as soon as possible. They're not there yet because at the time of the recording of this voiceover, it is Christmas Eve and I'm planning to take a few days off to kind of be doing holiday things. So I will have those available for you guys as soon as possible. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it has been helpful. If you're interested in any of the materials that I used or in signing up for Skillshare, all those links are down in the description. Happy holidays to everyone, no matter where you're from or what you're celebrating or if you're celebrating, and I will see you all next time. Bye guys.